Welcome to Live Interactive English. Hello, everyone. I'm Karen, and I'm Matt. And today we're looking at part one of our story, Beowulf. Beowulf.、Mm -hmm. Who is Beowulf? Beowulf is a famous and very old, like a long time ago, a, a hero. Oh, <gasps> you know. I love heroes. And then I know a lot of people are fascinated by. Superheroes, you know all the Avengers. So speaking of heroes, who is your favorite hero or superhero? Well, since I was you know very young, growing up in Canada, I used to watch the, my favorite TV show, which、mm -hmm. was the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <gasps> Ninja Turtles. They love to eat pizza. That's right. right. And I and I like pizza, so <laughs> I like the Ninja Turtles. And they would save people, and they were heroes. And so my like fifth birthday party was Ninja Turtle themed, and I dressed up as a Ninja Turtle for my birthday and also for Halloween that year. That is so cool. Did you buy your costume? Actually, my mom made most of the costume. My mom、wow. was very good at, at making things and helping us to make, helping me and my sister to make our costumes every year. Oh, that is so cute! You have to show me a picture. I would love to see you as Ninja Turtle. How about now? Do you still dress up for Halloween? You know, as superheroes. I do sometimes. I've dressed a couple times as Superman. Superman.、Yes. That's pretty cool. How about Iron Man? I've never dressed as Iron Man、nope. because the costume is too complicated. It's very <laughs> difficult to make an Iron Man costume. Superman, you just need a Superman shirt and some red underwear. That is right, <laughs> and you can put a white shirt on top of it, right? <laughs> yeah. Ah, okay. Well, I can't wait to listen to our story of Beowulf,、mm -hmm. who is also a hero. So let's go check it out. In an age of heroes, Beowulf, a Geatish prince, stood out for his bravery. When he was a young man, he fought for a Danish king named Hrothgar. Hrothgar had built his people a great hall where they ate, drank, and sang. However, a terrible monster living in a nearby swamp was angered by the noise. The monster, Grendel, started attacking the hall every night, killing many people. It was after twelve years of this that Beowulf finally came to Hrothgar's aid. The king threw Beowulf a feast, which attracted Grendel once again. Beowulf defeated Grendel by using his bare hands to tear off the monster's arm. The monster then fled to the swamp and died. Looking at part one of our story called Beowulf, who is a hero, right? But I know nothing about him. Well, we got to get into today's story to learn some more about who is Beowulf. All right. So let's begin.、Mm -hmm. In an age of heroes, Beowulf, a Geatish prince, stood out for his bravery.、Ooh. So in this time, an age of heroes means there's many heroes.、Mm -hmm. But this hero in particular, Beowulf, stood out because he was extra brave.、Oh. Stood up for his bravery. He's not scared of anything,、mm -hmm. right? That's right. When he was a young man, he fought for a Danish king named Hrothgar. Ah,、oh, Hrothgar. Okay, let's continue. Hrothgar had built his people a great hall where they ate, drank, and sang. However, a terrible monster living in a nearby swamp was angered by the noise. <gasps> uh oh, there is a terrible monster、mm -hmm. living in a nearby swamp. <gasps> And what is a swamp? So swamp is a noun. Basically, it's a wetland area with waterlogged soil, often covered with thick vegetation.、Mm -hmm. mm, and there's a terrible monster living in there, right? Yeah. Usually, a when we use the word swamp, it usually implies like a not a nice place,、mm -hmm. maybe a little bit of a scary place, and that's why you know this is where the monster. Lives because it's not a nice place where people like to go. That's right. It's dirty and wet and dark.、Mm -hmm. 
The monster Grendel started attacking the hall every night, <gasps> killing many people. It was after twelve years of this that Beowulf finally came to Hrothgar's aid. Oh, so finally came to Hrothgar's aid,、mm -hmm. meaning came to help him, right? Came to help after. Twelve years. He waited. He waited quite a while to help. That's true. <laughs> That is a very long time. So twelve years of this monster attacking every night.、Mm. That would be not a very nice way to live for、exactly. those twelve years. The king threw Beowulf a feast,、mm -hmm. which attracted Grendel once again. Uh oh!、Mm -hmm. Attracted Grendel once again. Attracted means to bring him in,、mm. right? Coming out of his swamp and going back to attack once again, one more time. That's right. And the king threw Beowulf a feast. You are talking about so a feast that is a noun. So a feast basically means a huge, delicious meal that's served at a party or celebration.、Mm -hmm. Usually, you would see a lot of delicious food, right? Yeah. So a lot of holidays, we might have a feast, like a Christmas feast. A Thanksgiving feast,、mm -hmm. or at Chinese New Year, people usually have a feast with their family. That is right. So, for example, you can say we sat around the table and ate a huge feast. <gasps> Ooh, who doesn't like that? That's right. Okay, so let's go back to the story. Beowulf defeated Grendel by using his bare hands to tear off the monster's arm. Ah, <gasps> so he defeated Grendel. That means he won, right? When they're fighting, and then he won, and then he beat. Grendel by using his bare hands, meaning not using any weapons at all, to tear off the monster's arm to take it off. The monster then fled to the swamp and died. Wow! Actually, it sounds like an easy job for him, right? What's、well, yeah? He's able to do it without even any weapons. Able to use his bare hands. It wasn't that hard for him to do. It seems he must be very very strong.、Mm -hmm. And he was able to defeat Grendel. So to defeat does mean to win over someone or something else. So if a team beats another team, then they defeat that team. Or for example, sadly, the team was defeated in the final minutes of the game.、Mm. So in this case, we're using passive voice. The team was defeated by someone else. So they were beaten, or they lost the game. Exactly. And we're looking at this word "flee," and the past tense is "fled," and that is a verb. So to flee means to run away, often from danger or evil. So, for example, when the storm hit, many people had to flee their homes for safer areas.、Mm, they have to run away, make sure that they are safe, right? Okay, and that's right. So Grendel had to flee. From Beowulf after his arm was torn off,、mm. and and then he died. So exactly,、mm. wow! He seems very, very strong and very, very brave. Yes, I think、uh, it seems like this is just the start of his career as a hero. Maybe, but、mm. maybe he's got a lot more in store that we're going to find out about after the break. All right. <laughs> Hello， 大家好，我是 Hanny。这两天要读的是古英语文学中最古老而且很重要的史诗《Beowulf》贝武夫。那么故事一开始提到，在英雄辈出的时代。吉特王子贝武夫因为勇敢脱颖而出。那我们先补充一下 ，Geet 是指吉特人，这是古斯堪的纳维亚半岛上的一个部族。那么 Geetish 则是形容吉特人的。那这一位吉特王子贝武夫，他在年轻的时候曾经为一名名叫。赫罗斯家的丹麦国王而战，那这位丹麦国王为他的人民建造一座大殿，他们就在那边吃饭啊、喝酒啊、唱歌。可是呢，生活在附近沼泽中的怪物 Grandel 被这个噪音激怒了，于是呢，怪物就开始每晚都攻击这座大殿，杀死了很多人。那这样的情况过了十二年后。贝武夫终于前来帮助丹麦国王了，那么国王就为贝武夫来设宴，那于是就再次引来了怪物。贝武夫赤手空拳扯下他的手臂，然后击败了怪物，这个怪物就逃到沼泽里面，然后就挂掉了。
。我们来看单字 feast。Feast， 它表示盛宴或是宴席。Defeat 当动词，它表示击败或是战胜。那么它也可以当名词来表达战败、失败。再看到 flee 这个动词，它是指逃跑、逃离。它的动词三态是 flee、fled、fled。我们补充一下，这个 swamp 它表示沼泽。那么 Karen 老师在讲解这个字时有提到积水、土壤，还有茂密的植物。老师用到 waterlogged， 在 water 后面加上 l o g g e d， 那这个形容词它是形容进水或是积水的。再看到 vegetation。V E G E T A T I O N， 那这个字呢是植物的总称，或者是指植被。好，那这边三个重点，我们进入文法时间。我们来看第一个重点是 stand out， 做不及物用可以指突出、显著或是醒目。那介绍几个常见用法，我们可以用 stand out for 加名词，表示因为什么而出众显眼。stand out。as 加上名词可以表示以什么身份而显眼出众。那如果是 stand out 加上 against、from 或是 in 再加名词，就表示在什么当中引人注目，从什么当中脱颖而出。举例来说 ，The boy's angelic voice made him stand out from the other competitors. 那位男孩天使般的歌声使他从其他参赛者中脱颖而出。第二重点是名词加上分词 v i n g 或 p p， 也就是分词片语来修饰名词的用法。那主格关系代名词 who、which、that 所引导的形容词子句，可以省略掉关系代名词，然后把动词改为分词来修饰先行词。那形容词子句是在表达主动或进行时，就是改用现在分词 v i n g； 被动的话呢，就是用过去分词 p p。举例来说 ，the boy is holding a jar。Which is filled with marbles. 男孩手里拿着一个装满弹珠的罐子。那其中的 which is filled with marbles 是形容词子句。我们删掉关系代名词 which， 还有 be 动词 is， 然后保留过去分词 filled， 那就会变成 the boy is holding a jar filled with marbles。我们这时候就看到 a jar 后面是接过去分词 filled。好，那么来看第三个重点是分裂句的用法。分裂句是用来强调直述句中的主词、受词、时间或地方副词或副词片语。那我们把强调的部分摆在 it is 和 that 之间，或是 it was 和 that 之间。那么句子其他部分则放在 that 之后。所以这个句型就会是 it is 或是 it was 加上强调部分加 that 再加句子其他部分。例如 ，They fell in love with each other during the trip. 我们用分裂句强调 during the trip， 那么句子会写作 It was during the trip that they fell in love with each other. 正是在那趟旅途中，他们坠入爱河。好，接华课文中。However, they were not safe yet, as Grendel's mother, another monster, came to the hall to avenge her son. She killed one of Hrothgar's men, so Beowulf followed her to the swamp. He dove into the water and swam toward Grendel's mother, killing her with a sword he found in a nearby cave. Beowulf then discovered Grendel's dead body and cut off his head. Upon returning to the surface, he showed it to the Danes. And they all cheered the monster's defeat. Welcome back, everyone. So before the break, we were looking at our story called Beowulf, and we learned that Beowulf is a hero from a long, long time ago. And he's very strong, and he's very brave. He's not scared of monsters, and he was fighting for the Danish king Hrothgar, right?、Mm -hmm. And there was a monster named Grendel living in the swamp. But Beowulf was able to kill him with his bare hands, right? That's right. So Beowulf easily defeated this monster,、mm -hmm. and so maybe everything's fine now. I think so, but maybe not quite.、Well, Let's find out. All right. However, they were not safe yet, as Grendel's mother, <gasps> another monster, came to the hall to avenge her son. <gasps> He, okay. She came to the hall to avenge her son. What does that mean to avenge? Right, so avenge is a verb that means to punish or hurt somebody. 
in return for something bad or wrong that they have done to you, your family, or your friends. Because Beowulf killed her son,、mm -hmm. so of course she wants to come back and get him, right? So she wants to avenge her son's death. She wants to return that pain that she feels for losing her son. She wants to turn that on to Beowulf and the. The king's court there. Oh no! What's going to happen? Okay, let's find out. She killed one of Hrothgar's men, so Beowulf followed her to the swamp. He dove into the water and swam to where Grendel's mother, killing her with a sword he found in a nearby cave.、Mm. Oh, so this time he used a weapon.、Mm. He used a sword to kill Grendel's mother. And it's a sword that he found in a nearby cave. So, what's a cave? A cave that is a noun. A cave is a natural hollow space under the ground that has an opening large enough for a person to enter. So, for example, we explored a dark cave on our hike through the mountains. Okay. Ah, interesting. Right, and very lucky of him to find a, a sword in the cave. You would have、That's、thought he、right. he should have brought one with him, but he was lucky enough to find one in a cave on the way to kill the monster. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Beowulf then discovered Grendel's dead body and cut off his head. <gasps> He's already dead. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, <laughs> Grendel's already dead. Why do you have to go and cut off his head? Maybe he's scared that Grendel will come back to life again and maybe come and hurt other people because he is a monster. Right. So there's some magic involved, maybe. So you don't know what could possibly happen. Exactly. Upon returning to the surface, he showed it to the Danes, and they all cheered the monster's defeat. Ah. Okay. They all cheered the monster to defeat. That means they're all so happy. Woohoo! Good job, you did it. You saved all of us.、Mm -hmm. So we're showing it to the Danes. The Danes are Danish people, people from Denmark. So he was serving a Danish king. So the Danes are the other people that are also serving the Danish king.、Mm -hmm. And they cheered because, I guess, now they know that both monsters have been defeated. Grendel's. I guess maybe they didn't know Grendel was dead before. Yeah, that's because true. Because he fled to the swamp. You're right. And, and died. They just knew that he didn't have an arm,、mm -hmm. but they didn't know for sure that he had died. But by presenting the monster's head and showing it to everyone, now they know for certain that Grendel is not coming back. That he is dead. And so Actually, they have won. That makes a lot of sense. Okay, so I guess that's the end of our story, right? He is a great hero, Beowulf, who saved everybody. The end. Well, I would hope so, but yes, we've got a whole another part coming next time that we've <gasps> got to get into. So there must so be more. more to this story and more to Beowulf's future of being a hero. All right, I can't wait, and we'll see you guys next time. <音>故事提到，接着怪物的母亲来到这座大殿为他的儿子报仇，那他就杀死丹麦国王的一名部下。因此呢，贝武夫就跟随他来到沼泽，潜入水中游向他。然后贝武夫在附近洞穴找到一把剑，他就用那一把剑杀死怪物的母亲。接着呢，他还发现怪物 Grandel 的尸体，然后砍下他的头，并带回去向丹麦人展示那颗头。这下子他们可以确定这个怪物战败而死了。那么丹麦人。就为此而欢呼。好，单字 cave， cave 它表示洞穴或者是山洞。那文中呢还有用到 avenge 这个动词，它是表达报什么什么的仇或者是血什么的耻。好，那么以上这些讲解，同学们别走开，马上回来哦。In an age of heroes, Beowulf, a Geatish prince, stood out for his bravery. When he was a young man, he fought for a Danish king named Hrothgar. Hrothgar had built his people a great hall where they ate, drank, and sang. However, a terrible monster living in a nearby swamp was angered by the noise. The monster, Grendel, started attacking the hall every night, killing many people. It was after twelve years of this that Beowulf finally came to Hrothgar's aid. The king threw Beowulf a feast, 
which attracted Grendel once again. Beowulf defeated Grendel by using his bare hands to tear off the monster's arm. The monster then fled to the swamp and died. However, they were not safe yet, as Grendel's mother, another monster, came to the hall to avenge her son. She killed one of Hrothgar's men, so Beowulf followed her to the swamp. He dove into the water and swam toward Grendel's mother, killing her with a sword he found in a nearby cave. Beowulf then discovered Grendel's dead body and cut off his head. Upon returning to the surface, he showed it to the Danes, and they all cheered the monster's defeat. I love this DJ, so good. I know, the music is great. Hey, where's, where's Ruth? She said she was gonna be here, right? Ah, I see her, she's over there fubbing. Let's go get her. Hey Ruth, what's going on? Hey Ruth, Shane is talking to you. Can you stop fubbing? Today we're going to talk about the term fubbing. Did you know that the word fubbing is a combination of phone and snubbing? That's right. It's used to describe the action of ignoring someone in a social setting by looking at your phone instead of paying attention to them. It's a phenomenon that has become increasingly common with the rise of smartphones. Besides, fubbing can also refer to someone who resists socializing with others. Like what Ruth was doing to Shane earlier. Exactly. Fubbing can be considered rude, especially in social situations. So here are some example sentences. Stop fubbing me. Or, he's always fubbing when we go out. Mm -hmm. Also, there is a word called fubber. Fubber refers to someone who ignores the person that they are with and gives attention to their mobile phone instead. For example, you can say, my wife is a fubber and a phone addict. That's right. So remember not to fub next time you're with friends. It's not polite. Okay, that's all for today's lesson. And we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.